today, our passage today is Zechariah chapter 13, verses 4 to 6. And it shall be in that day that every prophet will be ashamed of his vision when he prophesies. They will not wear a robe of coarse hair to deceive, but he will say, I am no prophet. I am a farmer, for a man taught me to keep cattle from my youth. And one will say to him, What are these wounds between your arms? Then he will answer those with which I was wounded in the house of my friend. Hey, it kind of looks like we could have some hope that some of the false prophets will repent. These guys are disavowing it. Hey, hey we don't do that anymore. I'm just, I'm just a farmer. Leave me alone. Uh, basically, there's a tremendous shame for people who have done false, the false prophet thing. These, so some here, it looks like maybe some have actually repented and turned humbly back to God. Good for them, if that's the case. Good for them. So the scene shifts, and it appears that, that Zacharias sees Jesus. And he asks, what are these wounds? What are these wounds in your hands? The marginal read, reading says hands. So what are these wounds in your hands? And then, and then in vision, then Jesus gives this gracious response. These are, I was wounded this way in the house of my friends. I mean, what, could, could there be a more gracious response? I mean, Jesus suffered violence, torture, murder, uh, every kind of humiliation. And yet he just says, in the house of my friends, this happened. But all's over. He's forgiven all. And he so is so pleased to have those that have repented to turn to him. Even those, no matter what violence they did to him, they're welcome back. Remember when they were nailing him to the cross and Luke, in the Gospel of Luke, he says, Father, forgive them. They, they, they're absolutely clueless about the full extent of what this means, paraphrase. And so Jesus is very compassionate. He's very patient. He's, he's, he's wanting us there. He wants us in the kingdom. So he regards these as wounds received from those that now are friends. When he came here to earth, he, what he heard was, crucify him, crucify him, stavro, stavro, pierce him, pierce him. And then they did it. But Jesus is still ready to forgive. How thankful we can be that Jesus, even though he received that murderous human reception, he still receives us and he offers us forgiveness. And he's ready to give us full transformation. He's not going to stop short. He is going to give us complete victory over sin. That's the kind of God he is. What, what precious humility he has. What precious gift he has for us. And we should turn to him with all of our hearts. Never was there a more amazing humility than the humility of Jesus, who suffered our evil to give us his goodness. Well, what, what can we think about this? Well, Jesus regards us as being friends in his house. Even after the way we've treated him, even after the things that we've done, he says, you're part of my household, you're part of my family. And so we should, we should invite him always into our house. We, he's invited us into his house. Let's, let's be on the team. Let's, uh, let's be glad that, that the scars, the nail prints in his hands, those are marks of love. Those are the only piercings that really matter on planet Earth. Let's, let's let him uh, give to us the gifts he wants to give us. He paid a high price to transform us. And today he offers a complete transformation. Complete. Complete. Way up here. Full. 100%. Complete. How can we do anything but say, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. I'll do anything you say. Mm -hmm.